I'll start with you. Elon Musk has made the point that he's resisting our government orders because, as he says, why should an unelected official in the eSafety Commissioner get to decide on matters beyond our border? Is he right to make that stand? Well, the government's been clear. We support the work of the eSafety Commissioner and protecting children online, I think I could safely say, is uh, a shared priority for all members of parliament right across the political spectrum. Since coming to office, we've quadrupled the funding for the eSafety Commissioner. I'm not going to comment on matters before the court, as I think you'd fully understand and expect, uh, but we do support the work of the eSafety Commissioner. But I'll just make a couple of points. This is a rapidly evolving and, frankly, deteriorating situation with the cesspit that we're seeing increasingly on social media. Radical content, extremist content, violent content that, frankly, it would not be allowed to be shown anywhere else. It's not about free speech, to be clear. This is more about reach, if you like. Um, no one's saying that, you know, I don't know, your crazy aunt down the road can't express her views, whatever they may be. You know, the family might roll the eyes. But it is about the responsibility of social media companies to not just chase ad revenue so people click on it and create outrage by spreading violent content or misinformation. And, you know, a really important point, and I've heard other coalition members, Labor members make this over the last couple of days, the Prime Minister. We live in a democracy where the Australian Parliament makes the rules for Australia. We don't live in a global tech platform tyranny and... You know, it'd be better if people like Mr Musk did it the easy way, um, accepted, behaved decently. But at the end of the day, um, if you've got to do it the hard way, if we need to toughen laws, if we need to crack down, that's what will happen. We're a sovereign country and we're a democracy. Yeah. Uh, he worries about where that leads, though. And so, Keith, I'll bring you on that point because Julian brought up that term reach. Was there overreach here? Because, again, as Elon Musk said, why should Australia be the global police in this space when it comes to what other nations can access online? That's right. I think there's been a lot of hyperbole in response to this injunction. And uh, as you noted, it will expire as an interim injunction at five o'clock and it will be heard in a more serious way. Uh, Elon Musk is of, is, of course, entitled to run that argument. Uh, and I think that there is an argument there. Uh, we don't want other states, particularly authoritarian states, deciding what happens on the internet. And I think that's the point that he is making. He might make it in a more colourful way, but it's a valid one and it should be heard. Uh, there are two aspects to this. There is, of course, the bipartisan desire to protect children from violent material. And the number one responsibility for that is on parents. And we're both parents, and, and, and that's our job. Uh, but, of course, we will lean in on tech companies to make sure that there are times when children are exposed to things that parents don't have oversight of. And if there are laws in the books and they're not being enforced, uh, again, the courts are the place where that argument is conducted, not politicians uh, throwing cute lines out, uh, uh, criticising overseas tech billionaires. Uh, I don't think that's helpful language when there's a matter before the courts right now. Yeah, I don't want my kids anywhere near social media, but it's there and uh, no doubt it's here to stay. Um, just on that point that you were talking about, Julian, Mike Burgess and Reese Kershaw, they're going to speak later today on social media. They want access to all the encrypted systems because that's where extremists are sharing vile propaganda. They're discussing weapon making and how to provoke a race war. Do you have faith that they'll allow access to their systems? Yeah, look, it is a significant intervention. And as you know, I'm a member of the Intelligence mm. and Security Committee. I was in Canberra last Tuesday, Wednesday, for a range of classified um, briefings and hearings with ASIO and the security agencies. And then we actually spent time in the afternoon on Wednesday at the Federal Police Headquarters. We received from some pretty hair-raising briefings about the dark web and about the increasing problem uh, that non-cooperation uh, of social media giants, of tech companies... Uh, is causing in terms of refusing access to the police. To put it in plain terms, Australians, you know, if you go to, if, if a crime has been committed to you and you go down to your local police station, Australians expect that the police have the reasonable powers and resources and the cooperation from other actors in society to pursue the criminals. We're talking here about protecting child exploitation, pedophiles, um, terrorists, people fomenting dissent, murder and violence, as well as cyber criminals. And I thought the ASIO director made a very important point. He's not asking for new laws. The parliament, 
uh, broadly, unanimously, bipartisan basis has passed the laws where required to provide this reasonable kind of access. Now, privacy is absolutely important in our society, but it's never been absolute. Of course, security and policing agencies have powers in the real world, and we can't treat the online world as fundamentally always different. Yeah. So I think it is, it is incumbent on these companies to continue to cooperate and not put up the walls uh, against, uh, against reasonable enforcement. Any issue with that, Keith? No, and I'll wait to see what the uh, the speech is later today. Uh, we've, we've seen the drop in the papers today, but but I'll, I'll watch with interest. I haven't had the briefings that Julian has had or the ministers have had, uh, but enforcing the laws, particularly where it comes to serious criminal, organised criminal conduct, is one that we can all agree should occur. But we should always be careful of overreach, always be careful. And uh, we're not the leading experts on technology, so we have to make sure that we are not one step behind the criminal networks because we can enact a law and the technology today and then tomorrow there's a new area where they've moved on to. So it's, it's a very fluid area and it's not easy for legislators. Gentlemen, we will leave it there. Um, Thank you both. We'll talk to you next week.